Ellie. Hello, Ellie Schragenheim. Welcome to Hi. Paris. Welcome to Maris Consulting. I wish I could welcome you to a, a sunny Paris day, but uh, it's worse than in a bad day in London today. So, uh, so right. uh, I helped you buy a warm coat yesterday. So yes. anyway, but anyway, so yeah, nice, nice to see you over here. Uh, you've done many things in your life, including uh, writing uh, uh, a certain number of books. Uh, or participating. Uh, or participating, yes. being a co-author yes. in, in several. Uh, and uh, one of those books is uh, Management Dilemmas, The Theory Constraints Approach to Problem Identification and Solutions. Uh, what is all that about? Well, first of all, it was my first, so you know we have special affection to our first baby, right? Right. So <laughs> this is one thing. The second thing about it is that I really try to give them as a wide scope TOC, which to look on TOC as a kind of a guidelines to solve problems of various natures in organizations. And so I came up writing 12... Let us call it stories. Mm -hmm. No, they are not really stories, but sort of because they presented a certain uh, managerial situation, mm -hmm. and I put it to the reader to read and think about. Okay, if I was there, what should they do? Mm -hmm. And then I presented my own uh, TOC analysis of the case. Mm -hmm. So. How would I, with the TOC tools, kind of combination of the five focusing steps, the general approach, and the thinking processes uh, to deal with a specific situation, etc. So uh, it was quite a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the stories I've used in class because mm -hmm. somehow in my uh, dealing with TOC, I did quite a lot of education. Yeah. And so uh, I had my simulators for production, mm -hmm. but when I stepped out of production, I did not have a simulator. I needed to have something else for people to experience. So I wrote these kind of stories. I'm still writing them. Yeah. So they are published as readers sometimes, or uh, now in my blogs that I, from time to time, take a, a case. Most of the cases are based on reality, but they are, of course, very much uh, different mm -hmm. than the original case. Yeah. Uh, all of them try to deliver some kind of a generic message. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I try to be a little bit more personal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so kind of answer my more artistic in <laughs> in, uh, intentions or... I would like to be to some degree. And again, this was quite my first book. So it also was kind of amusing to me because Goldot, of course, published a goal. Mm -hmm. And the goal was a story. And in itself, this was quite a new kind of a communication way. Yeah. And in a way, I went in this way with this kind of difference that I did not write one large story I wrote uh, 12 very short mm -hmm. kind of stories and then I also did the uh, analysis mm -hmm. of, of the case so yeah. because um, I, I know many people uh, who consider that within the 200 theory constraints books that is one of their favorites about as you to use your vocabulary, the, the wider theory of constraints, uh, yes. not just focused on a particular uh, solution, such as one, the one that is presented in the goal of uh, drum buffer rope in manufacturing. Uh, so this this wider view of theory of constraints. Um, there are there are other writings about the the, the, the principles, the, the the thinking process of it. Uh, but what people like about it is this is. It brings it very much to life because it, 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 you, you put it into context, right? It's not at all theory. It's, Thank it, you. It's, this was uh, the intention. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, it, it, it you know it brings it back down to earth. You know, when you're in the company which has got this sort of problem, as you describe, what does it mean to to think in the top way uh, to solve the problem? So. 
quite. Look, a quite a lot of practitioners, when they come to TOC or they come to any kind of consultants, they have a problem. Mm -hmm. Not always they know exactly what the yeah. problem is, right. but they know they have a problem. Yeah. And they come to you, and what they ask is really an answer to the problem, the solution. Mm -hmm. But their interest is very much focused on the problem, mm -hmm. which in a way I think it's kind of a mistake. Because, okay, they have a problem. Suppose you help them to overcome the problem, eventually they will have another problem. And now kind of the question is, uh, excuse me, do I, do I need to run again to Philip? Or maybe I'm already equipped uh, to deal with it myself. Mm -hmm. Certainly as an educator, I like to be sure. on the... On the so, so, okay, to teach them how to uh, fish, right? Yeah, I understand. And the nice thing about it uh, is, as you said, there are 12 stories, I think, yeah? Yes. 12 cases that, that, that are analyzed. And it's uh, because of that and the diversity of the, of the, 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 the problems uh, described, analyzed, and solved, uh, it breaks through one of the things that I know Eli Goldratt himself felt was uh, one of the weak points of the, of the goal, which is it was only one type of factory, one type of thing, and so forth. So people could easily say, you know, I'm not like that. But when people go through these 12 stories, uh, seeing how the same approach, the same ideas, the same way of thinking, is applied, it gives them that that uh, three-dimensional view of what you're talking about, which then which should enable them to think, okay, now my problem, how uh, what are my lessons learned yes. from this, and how I should apply it. Thank you, because this is exactly what I yeah. really wanted to achieve. And uh, when I speak about kind of cases, I'm really a big a believer in cases yeah. and especially in fictional cases because let me tell you if I take a real case eventually the essence is relatively low because again it is tied to something very specific and some of the real happening in the story are boring mm -hmm. They do not really add anything yeah. to the solution. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, uh, uh, police uh, films, right? If it was the true life of a policeman, there would be many very boring parts that they need to be yes. cut out. Yes, right? okay. So yeah. In the real so world, it's, uh, it's we like... We bring the more interesting part to yeah. it. Uh, but then I have something, because when I look on some other cases, sometimes because they are focused mm. on the, that they need to give a solution to this case, the case is too much hinting towards the solution mm -hmm. because when you tell a story, you need to decide what do you tell and what you don't tell. Mm -hmm. And so if everything you tell are indicative of something, like you know, if there is a gun in the first <laughs> part, it will shoot sometime... At, a later kind of a hint like this, and I tried my best to confuse the thing, which will <laughs> to oh, well, include things that have nothing to do with a solution. You're right, and that's uh, that's very important and very representative of one of the one of the powers of the theory of constraints, which is this idea of sorting it through and focusing on the few important points because Absolutely. in the real world when you try and do any of these ideas you have to realize that 99% of the information you have around you is not useful not uh, you might, and you have to learn how to ignore it so uh, you've done and that this is a very big uh, thing how do you look on huge amount of data and you decide what is helpful and what is yeah, not and quite a lot of the things that I always try to uh, tell my students is kind of the question, uh, all right, here is a case. What facts do you miss? What do you need to know? Mm -hmm. But please beware, if you ask me about the facts, I first of all will ask you, why do you think they are important? Mm -hmm. How do you think they will make a change eventually, okay? And so I think it makes them uh, into kind of attention that they need. Not just ask, okay, uh, how long are you on TLC? Mm -hmm. Okay, is it truly relevant? Yes or no? I mean, 
All right, if you are very short time, I understand. But if you already, I mean, more than four or five years, so who cares if you are already 20 years or only 17 or, God forbid, only eight? I mean, does it really mean anything more? So what is relevant and what is not is a crucial question. Look, uh, in uh, MBA school or something like this, one of the things I learned was that uh, managers feel themselves much more easier with graphs than with a table or description. Now I try to think why is it it so? Mm -hmm. And the simple answer is, if you don't know where to look, the graph Mm -hmm. gives you a much better quick hint Mm -hmm. where to look, because you look on some irregularity and all right. But if you know what you are looking after, that maybe the table gives you a much more concrete answer to the question. Mm-hmm. So the sort of uh, something that we need, I think, to be better is to ask the right questions and then looking for the answers. Okay. I think this is uh, pretty so much this. Absolutely. So that that's uh, us, uh, Eli Schrag and I'm Philip Maris, talking about uh, Eli's book, Management dilemmas, which uh, uh, well, we, I recommend it because uh, well, we try to describe what it, its value. It'll uh, it'll teach you to to think better and to find better solutions to the problems you you're facing. Thank you, thank you, thanks.